1.12 is here and it is the most anticipated wipe and update for over two years. Along with VoIP, Inertia and New Ballistics, we got a brand new map, Lighthouse. And boys, this map is something else. But it came with a surprise in the form of a brand new scav faction that we weren't expecting. This AI faction is known as the Rogues and they are a force to be reckoned with. But don't worry, as with all of the scav bosses and mini bosses in this game, I will be showing you my tried and tested ways of bringing them down and getting you out alive with that sweet, sweet loot. First, let's give you a rundown on what these rogues are and where they spawn. Rogues are exclusive to the brand new lighthouse map at this time, and the lore behind them is that they were ex-USEC operators which fought in the contract wars. After the contract wars ended, they formed their own little faction calling themselves Rogues. They spawn in just one location at the moment on the lighthouse map, and it is pretty much the dead centre of the location, known as the Water Treatment Facility. The Rogues have sort of taken this location over as their own, fortifying it with HMGs and AGS-30s posted up on the roofs and in the watchtowers. And because of the pure size and detail of this one area alone, these rogues can pop up from any angle. The rogues are, as mentioned, ex-USEC PMCs, so they will communicate in a variation of the free USEC voices, similar to how USEC raiders act on other maps, but with slight adjustments. For example, if you're a USEC yourself and not in a team with any bears when encountering them, they won't shoot you on sight. Instead, they'll tell you to leave the location first, and if you don't comply quickly, then they will open fire and you'll be torn down pretty quick. If you are a USEC in a group with a bear, or a bear yourself, then no matter what, you will be considered hostile on sight. And if you choose to engage these rogues as a USEC, you will be classed as a traitor for around 3-5 to five raids before they start acting normal again, and during that time they will kill you on sight no matter what. Consider these rogues a new raider group, because the raider AI has simply just been modified and tweaked to create this new faction. From my experience hunting this new faction as often as possible since 12.12, I can also confirm that they always spawn in the lighthouse map. There's no percentage chance like with the scav bosses or the cultists. They spawn 100% of the time and in large groups too. Usually I've seen around 6 to 10 of these in a raid and they are often grouped in pairs patrolling different areas of the water treatment facility. Now unfortunately not all of these rogues are lootable, a couple of these scavs will be located on the roofs of the buildings inside the water treatment facility and on top of the mounted weapons. And although you can kill them up there, from my exploration around this area, you can't get on top of those roofs at this time. There are plenty down on the ground for you to loot though, either inside of the buildings themselves or patrolling around them and they are extremely deadly. There are plenty of vantage points around this location where you can get height on these guards, but they are deadly accurate even at ranges exceeding over 300 meters on both the mounted weapons and the weapons that they carry, so make sure that you have cleared out the area before you go anywhere near to loot. But when you do get to loot them, you'll be pleasantly surprised with what they can carry. They carry many variations of the AK and M4 setups as well as HK416s, SR25s and even the new MK16 SCAR Ls and USP pistols, which are all extremely modified and extremely valuable to extract with, especially in the early wipe as of right now. In terms of what they're wearing, they mainly wear hats rather than helmets for the most part, however they can wear a variation of helmets too, but none of them have face shields from my experience, so taking shots at their head will be a good option to bring these down especially due to their body armor varying from the very occasional packer armor to the more frequent USEC armor or gem for assault and high mobility kits, or even every so often an Offspray MK4A armored rig, which is level 5 and pretty tanky. Their health is also increased much like scav bosses and raiders. Their arms and legs have 100 HP each, their stomach has 130 HP, 164 HP for the thorax, and 42 HP for the head, totaling 736 HP for each one of the rogues compared to your just 440 for your PMC. Another thing that I will mention is the head only has 42 HP, so that is another reason to aim for the head whenever you can. If you decide to go for chest shots, you've got to get through their high tier armor, and then you've got to take down their very high 130 or 164 HP. Now I've told you everything there is to know about them, 
how do you go ahead and kill them? Firstly, as I mentioned, there are going to be a couple of pairs hanging around on the roofs or on the wash towers posted up around the corners. Whatever you do, take these out first from range if possible. This will avoid you getting suppressed or shredded by these accurate scavs later on when you go to take out the rest of the rogues. As I mentioned, these scavs have amazing vision enabling them to shoot you at distance too. But the best way that I've managed to kill the rogues is actually to go on top of the rocky mountain above the water treatment facility. But you need to be extremely careful due to the excessive landmines all over this mountain. To avoid getting your legs blown off by these death traps, make sure you stick to the rocky areas of this mountain. Mines are not placed over the rocks, but they are all over the dirt area of this mountain range. So pathfinding your way up here can be difficult, but it will give you a good bit of protection against the suppressive fire and a good visual on most of the rogues in this area. You'll be able to take out quite a few from up here if you've got a long range optic, but if they do shoot you, then be sure to get behind cover until they stop shooting your position and then move up higher and further back, but watch out for the invisible walls that are also all over this mountain. After you've picked off the targets from the roof, at the very least, you can push down towards the outside walls of the water treatment facility. Then once you're down there, move along the outside of these walls to ensure that you do not get shot from the rogues moving around inside of the water treatment walls. Stick to the wall until you find a gap close to one of the large grey and blue buildings and move inside of those buildings. Use every bit of cover that you can whilst moving through this area and move through this area slowly, checking your corners and holding angles until you get a good defensive position towards the middle of these pumping rooms. From here you'll have good lines of sight from either doorway at either end of the buildings and from here you can post up and hear and see when rogues are coming in and you will hear them pushing in too. As I stated earlier for the most part these are like raiders meaning you'll hear comms like we've got a rat, I see a bandit and scav over there. This will give you a vital audio cue to not only give you the direction they are coming from but also when they are coming for you. And remember, like I said, they group up in pairs, so they won't push alone. If you see and kill one, do not think about going to the loot until you've waited for another one to follow in. If they don't push, then exit the other end of the building to what you came in, and move your way around the large free buildings on the outskirts of the water treatment facility. I would use this as a perimeter scan before you push in towards the middle, you got much more cover, and you will find the majority of the rogues in these buildings anyway. Make sure that when you are pushing between the buildings though that you're using vehicles placed around the outskirts and shipping containers that are also around the outskirts as some form of hard cover so you have as much cover as possible from the rest of the water treatment facility so you can push from one location to the other without rogues spraying you down. If you are quite noisy and you are killing some of the rogues though, they will not hesitate to push your location and that will give you a much better chance if you are holding good angles in an area full of hardcover rather than out in the open where PMCs will also become a threat. Bringing a team is a great thing too and this is pretty obvious, if you can get a team things become easier. Being able to position a small sniper team of two on the rocks in the far distance above the water treatment facility, one with a rangefinder and one with a sniper with a high powered optic, while another two or three head down and clear the warehouses, this will give the best coverage on the whole location. The sniper team can alert the ground team if anyone's heading to their building or vicinity, and they can also provide accurate covering fire thanks to the range readings from the brand new rangefinder, which is only 9k rubles from Jaeger level 1 by the way. Thanks to the addition of VoIP, I've even managed to make friends with a few player scavs, which allowed us to have an even larger team taking on these rogues. And considering player scavs from my experience are free to roam that area, unless they engage one of the rogues themselves, they are also able to act as great scouts to give the PMCs accurate representation on how many rogues are in that area, as well as roughly where they are within that area too. I'd like to reiterate something that I said earlier also. Remember when I said that they are more friendly towards USEC PMCs or groups of USECs? Well, as much as they give you a little opportunity to flee the area before engaging, this isn't much time at all, so I definitely wouldn't rely on being able to roam freely before being able to take them out, because that's certainly not the case. However, you will be able to get much closer before being engaged 
allowing for a much more detailed patrol of the area, but as soon as you engage one of the rogues, either as a USEC or a player scav, you are considered a traitor and this will carry out for around 3-5 to five raids like I mentioned earlier. And the more raids you do, the easier they'll be on you. For example, you kill them and the next raid they'll be completely hostile to you, treating you kill on sight. Then the raid after, they'll run up to you, flip you off and then kill you, and then they'll slowly ease it down before acting normal again. If you survive and pick up a bunch of loot then there are a lot of nearby extracts for you to make your way to, the closest being the armoured train, but that is timed and very popular, so listen out for the train whistle, but be on your guard all the way up there until the train leaves and you get out because you will get people heading to that location as well, especially with how close it is to the water treatment facility. In short, these rogues are definitely a formidable foe. They will take a lot of planning and time to clear out, but when you do, they'll provide a great amount of loot and higher tier weapons and armor to sell or keep for your later raids. And hopefully this video has helped you give you a little few ideas on how to take them out easier. And I personally really like the addition of a new faction to Escape from Tarkov, and I can't wait to see what other higher tier scavs they add to this map in the future expansion, including the scav bosses that are planned as well. And I want to know what you think of these scavs as well. Let me know down below in the comment section if you haven't already. Subscribe to keep yourself up to date with all the latest Tarkov content, including an upcoming optimization guide and loot guide for the new Lighthouse map. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.